Hello, Stokers of Stoke Nation. This is Chad Kroger coming in with the Going Deep with Chad and JT podcast. Guys, before we begin, I want to remind you once again that we are brought to you by Manscaped. Manscaped, thank you so much for keeping our trims pubed, for looking after our hogs, for making sure that our dongles are looking fresh and clean. Because, guys, when you go to a different neighborhood or something and you see a nice, freshly cut lawn, what do you think? You think that guy is a lawnmower 2.0 and he trims his pubes daily, okay? And that's what we want you guys to feel like. I don't even know what I'm saying right now because I'm so hyped on the Perfect Package 2.0. And guess what, guys? They got the lawnmower 3.0 coming out. That's three versions of lawn. And you're going to trim your pubes with that. So, uh, JT, you, uh, you manscaped lately? No, dude. It's been a second. Nice. How do you feel? Um... I think I'd feel better if they were in a little trimmed up. Yeah. They don't look terrible. Yeah. It's like, you know, they say, like, make your bed in the morning so you can start off on the right foot. For sure. I pube my trims in the morning just to, like... How often know. do you trim your pubes? Um, you see yeah. twice a day, right? Yeah, but, I mean, I've, I've been taking advantage of lunch also. Um, Three times a day? Yeah, I mean, you know, I just... It just feels so good. I love it, dude. And I'm just so hyped on the uh, on the hardware, you know, and it's just like, there's no, I know I'm not going to nick my sack and stuff, and it's just going to flow nicely. Yeah, discipline is one of the things I admire most about you. Thank you so much, yeah. So, guys, uh, if you want to trim your pews three times a day, hit up Manscaped. Use code GODEEP20 at manscaped.com. Your pubes and are another thing I really admire about you. Dude, thank you. I've been actually, I've been practicing my nudity a little bit more. I'm just trying to get more comfortable, like in the gym uh hit the steam room you know you usually keep the towel over you i spread that open i let let the let the dong hang uh and then i walk through the gym locker room towel on shoulder what's your posture uh shoulders back chest forward waist forward I, i want dominant yeah i want people to know you know i want people to see it what's your dick's posture uh, he's, he's so chill, dude. He's just hanging. That's nice. Yeah. Uh, especially after the steam room, he's just like, oh, dude, that felt so good. I, you know, my pores feel good. Um, I'm relaxed. The balls are not getting all up in my business right now. They're just hanging. So it's nice. That's awesome. Yeah. When was the last time you hung dong? The last time I was naked for a while. Um, last night. Nice. Yeah. Where were you? At home. Yeah. Yeah. Did you do anything or you just sort of I just walked around naked for a bit. Yeah. And then I I was taking a shower and I had my phone in there in the Ziploc bag. Mm -hmm. And then Joe called me. Yeah. I just picked up. Nice. He was like, are you in the shower? Yeah. I was like, yeah. He's like, let me hang up. And I was like, let's keep talking. Yeah. Does Joe, you ever catch Joe just hanging dong? Never. He's got to do it. It's just not his personality. Yeah. But I mean, you know, if 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 he did... I'd be so stoked. Yeah. I'd be like, dude, yes. Yeah. Thank you for trusting me with your nudity. But you can't force that kind of thing. Do you think it's because he's he just keeps his dominance, his power, his inner darkness sheathed? Yeah. And he's like he's like, you know what, I don't wanna I wanna put that on people. I don't wanna easily dominate people. I wanna, you know, have a amicable uh state of being, but you know, if the time calls for it, I will hang down. Yeah, he's just a super polite guy. Mm-hmm. And I'm always like, I don't, with me, it's, we're past that. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have to like, you know, observe those manners with me. Yeah. I respect that. Because I want to observe your banner dong. Mm. Yeah, me too. Dude. What's up? Just chilling. What do you read? Did you hear on the night version of the light yeah, on you your know, phone? You don't like it? No, I, I do. I, oh, okay. I'm, I'm, I don't know uh, why I got so uh, s- self-conscious there. <laughs> you don't like it? No, I don't, dude. <laughs> Change it right fucking now. Why, uh, why'd why you do that? Uh, I think Sally was telling me that it's uh, it's better. 
Mm -hmm. She was like, you got to turn it on darkness and then people can't read what you're doing as much. I think I was like in a movie or something. Oh, yeah. so they, it's more clandestine? Yes, sir. So people can, can't read your stuff? Yeah. Nice. I thought it was because of the like the light affects your eyes, the blue light or something. Yeah. I think the eye in clandestine is clandestine. Mm. Dang. Dude, but I was at the park yesterday. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was just chilling, grabbing some sun. Uh -huh. You haven't worried about disease lately. For sure. I thought I wasn't getting tan, so I Googled, is there diseases where you can't get tan anymore? And there's none. Oh, you scared the shit out yeah, of me. Yeah, no, I know, right? I was terrified, too. <laughs> my, my, but no matter what you have, you can get tan. <laughs> dude, I'm hyperventilating right now, dude. Isn't that scary? Oh, dude, my adrenaline's going through the roof. <laughs> Take anything from me, but not my bronze. Oh, yeah. dude. <laughs> Emma, did you hear that? Did you get scared? Do I get scared? Did you get of scared? Of like disease? No. Well, uh, for yeah, sure. for sure. But like of the what JT was talking about when he mentioned a potential non-tanning disease. Yeah. I mean, I definitely get that in the like winter when there's not as much sun. I feel pale and I feel grosser when I'm paler. Mm -hmm. So but I kind of get it. Do you take solace in the fact that it's not because of a disease? It's just because of cloud coverage? And no matter what befalls you, you'll always be able to get tan. Yeah. In yeah. the face of it. I mean, it's it's nice. It's easier here than it is in, like, winter places. For sure. But, yeah, I get that. Totally. For sure. Yeah. When I was at the park, I observed three 14-year-old <coughs> boys walking. Mm -hmm. And one of them was cool. He was kind of like Timothy Chalamet and Lady Bird. Oh, damn. And one of them was, like, medium cool. Oh, fuck And yeah. one of them was uncomfortable in his skin. Oh, sick. And then three girls their own age approached yeah. that they knew. Yeah. And I just watched them. And I was, like, so fascinated. I was like, what is going to happen here? Yeah. And then the coolest kid just walked up and gave, like, a casual hug to all three girls. Yeah. And then the medium cool kid gave a hug to the girls. And then the kid who was uncomfortable in his skin, like, put his hood on. And just nodded at the girls. No way. Yeah. Really? That was me oftentimes. Yeah. Damn. I think he might have even given one of the girls a handshake. And then he, you could tell he was just tense the whole time. And then they, yeah. they went their own ways after a minute. Yeah. And his shoulders just loosened up. Yeah. He just went back to having a good time with life. Yeah, dude. You know what I've always thought? They should have like a, a course in like college or high school on like greetings and stuff. Yes. Because some people are naturals at it. But most people, they don't know what they're doing. And like, you know, that's a stress I deal with in the real world often. Do I go for the handshake? Do I go for the pound? Do I go with the handshake to hug? Do I do some kind of crazy shit and throw them off a little bit? Do I go for the hug? I don't, you know, you got to read that. Yeah, and it's, it's so tough, It'd dude. be nice if you had like a manual or something to be like, dude... Uh, this is what you do in this situation. What do you do now most of the time? I go for the handshake just to like be like um, just to sort of give off like a businessman vibe even though I'm an activist. Uh, Can I feel it? Oh, dude, you hit that nice. Yeah. Because you caught it right. I think that's really the key to a handshake is you, where the thumbs get, hit. You get the webbing. Yeah, the webbing. Yeah. You want to really connect the webbing. Yeah. And then grip hard. Yeah. Don't crush the guy, but but, squee her, but, but squeeze. But give it a squeeze. Yeah. I like going for the handshake and then I, I like to improv it, you know, go for the handshake and then see if you can get a sliding motion in there to maybe turn it into like a, I don't even know what you call it, like a clasp. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then, then maybe bring that in. And Okay. And this is what I do. If you go for the clasp. You pull them in. Oh, right. Yeah, don't make it awkward. Just pull them in and be like, get in here. And then bring the other hand around the back? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, pat them hard. How many pats? Two. Perfect. Yeah, what do you do? What's your... I mix it what's up. What's your meth? Because I'm like, it, I'm Mr. Spontaneity, you know what I mean? I go oh, into every I like situation that. I like, like, that. I like this that. whole I fucking like thing could backfire. Yeah, yeah. And then so, I, you know, my, I was at a friend's 30th birthday on Saturday. Happy 30th, Robbie. You're a wonderful guy. <laughs> and uh, when I was leaving, his Irish cousins were there, and I barely knew him. And actually, uh, all the conversation we had was pretty stilted. But when I was leaving, I just said, you know what? I'm going to hug you. Mm -hmm. And I gave him a light little hug. Yeah. Yeah. But most of the time, I don't know what I'm going to do. Yeah. And, uh, so, you know, I fuck it up all the time. But what I try to do is just laugh. Yeah. And then do, just be like, like, watch. Like, what's up, man? What's up, dude? Oh, <laughs> oh dude. <laughs> Sorry, dude. No, it's all hey, good. Hey, it's good to see you there, bro. Yeah, you too. Something like that. That was sick. Yeah. I, uh, I had a buddy, Greg, who would always go for the hug. And it was so warm and nurturing. And uh, 
So maybe I'll start doing that. Some people are huggers. Straight for a hug. Some people are just built to hug. It does feel good when someone's like kind of unsure and you just get the hug in. You just grab me, bring them close. It was, and you just feel them. It was my birthday at the the office we've been at. Yeah. And the boss came over and hugged me. Yeah. And I hugged him deep, dude. Oh, yeah. He hugged so, me around the back and I just wrapped his arms up and I squeezed him. Yeah. And I realized I, was, I, I heard him whisper, I'm not your dad to me. Really? No. Nah. But I, I felt like, I was like, am I, is this too much? Yeah. But I do like the guy a lot. So I was yeah. like, I squeezed him back. No, he, he, he gives off that vibe. Yeah, he's paternal, right? Yeah. Yeah. You look at him and you feel comfort. Yeah, and he hugged me first, you yeah. know? Yeah. yeah. But I squeezed him good. Big squeeze. Just his arms, but I squeezed those arms. Hell yeah. Because I had his back to him. He kind of hugged me from behind. Yeah. Yeah. What a great guy. Beast. Yeah, uh, he's a perma legend of the week. Perma. Parmesan cheese. What's your favorite cheese? Um, um, and do you know what dude, Manchego is? Sharp cheddar. No. Fair. What's Manchego? I don't know. But Cut. I saw it on a menu the other day, and I, I switched to cheddar, actually. It was, it was coming on a burger. Yeah? Yeah. What's your favorite cheese? Camembert. Whoa. Yeah. Is that a type of bear? I think it's a cheese from a bear. Wow. Yeah. Sounds aggressive. Yeah. That's cool. Dude, I heard Joe Rogan on his podcast. Yeah. Like I hear him on every podcast he does. And uh, Robert Downey Jr., great one. Yeah, Check I listen to that one. Oh, do you like it? Yeah, yeah. It's good. Good vibes, dude. Dude, Robert, he's so cool. Cool dude. There is like a... When a movie star of that caliber comes on, the the, the tone shifts. Yeah. Because where you can tell that Joe feels a little bit... I don't know if nervous is the right word, but it's like he looks up to them a little bit. He more. wants to make them comfortable. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there was that part where Rogan was like, dude, I'm so glad you did Doolittle. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I don't know if I talk to you off camera, if that would be how you, but that's a good way to open it. It's smart. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's great. He does the best interviews. Yeah. Because I think sometimes like even when we've interviewed people and I cut a lot of it out, I'm like, oh, I need to be like a journalist and get this person to, uh, like answer deeply honestly but that's not always the most fun to listen to you know what yeah I mean? and you can get those people there maybe more easily if you make them feel good yeah uh, well, well i think yeah it's interviews where they're having fun um that's the best i mean what, what are my favorite interviews i mean the one with brad and leo on wtf was fun that but was i mean good. they're so they're so huge in my mind in so many ways so to hear them be like so cool with mark Marin, like like my favorite part was when Brad so sincerely he's like, dude, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. I'm a fan, dude. I was like, fuck, he's so cool. <laughs> he likes stuff. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he is really cool. So, he's he's having a moment in a yeah. life full of great moments. He's having the yeah. peak moment right now, it feels like. Yeah. But I don't I've never I've never been one for the the interviews where they're really kinda like probing deep yeah. into them. Like it's just like uh, it, it I I'm that's not the tone I enjoy. I loved him. I used to listen to early Marin episodes, like the first yeah. hundred, and yeah. he would just fucking dig on people. Yeah. Like he'd be talking to Zach Galifianakis, and he'd be like, so you were in uh, End of the Wild. Hey, you're, you're pretty good on that. Yeah. <laughs> and it'd be like, just kind of like withholding and biting. Yeah. But yeah. Galifianakis would call him out on it, and then it would he reveal would. things about both of their personalities. Right. Yeah. And so... But he's he's one person who can do that. I think Charlemagne the God does that well, too. But, but not oh, everybody's yeah. that person. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like you can if you watch him with Post Malone, he's like, he's like picking on him the whole time. Really? Yeah, and Post Malone has his girlfriend there, and he's like, you know, he's gonna break up with you, right? <laughs> like, you know, you guys aren't gonna stay together. And Post Malone's like, why are you causing problems, man? Yeah. I'm just saying, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he kind of has that face too. Yeah, I'm just saying. And then they broke up. Really? Yeah. How soon after? I think it took a little bit, but close enough where it made it seem like Charlemagne was right. Yeah. Damn. But I don't know if it's right to be right in that circumstance. Dude, I didn't know Mayor Pete Buttigieg was gay. Oh, he didn't? No. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm more excited now. I'm like, all right, he's got some juge. Yeah, yeah. yeah. None of my yeah. friends mentioned it either. It is kind of, it, it, he never talked, I mean, I'm not following that stuff really at all, but it, it is like I heard it briefly like a year ago, <laughs> but it's not like, it doesn't seem like it's a common topic in conversation. No. Nah. That's good. Yeah. Dude, uh, I, uh, 
Are those notes for the pod? Yeah. yeah cool. Yeah. I uh, I wanted to revisit a question from last week. A mm-hmm. guy wrote in about how he was getting punched at punk shows, mm-hmm. and he had like injured one of their guys, and he wanted to get it on. Yeah. And we told him he needed to jack off more, and so did the other guys. Yeah. And I think that was good advice. But also, I thought about it more because it kind of stuck in my head, and I was like, what should he do? You know what I mean? And I think sometimes I do a disservice because I, I tell stories about when I was in fights, but I don't tell stories about when I ran from fights, which is much more common. Right. And at one time, I stopped a fight. These guys wanted to beat up my friend Clinton because he was beautiful uh-huh. and kind of pompous, and, uh, and they were going to kick his ass. And I saw that they were going to do that, like four or five guys, and they would have beat the fuck out of us. And so I just went up to the man and I went, dude, we don't want to fight you. And we're sorry for wh- whatever you think we did. I'm truly sorry. We just want to get out of here. Yeah. And then the guy was like, all right. <laughs> and I was like, all right, cool. And then like, I was like, and then Clinton was like, I'm not getting out of here or whatever. I was like, dude, shut up, shut up, shut up. And we got out of there. And I was thinking like, maybe if this dude just went up to the guys and like apologized mm-hmm. and then just said he didn't want to fight, I think it would take a real scumbag to fight you after that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... um, because it's so unexpected. It would throw them off balance. Yeah. They'd be like, oh, well, thank you. All right, I'll see you at. Uh, I'll see you later. Yeah, and if they still want to fight you after that, maybe just don't go to those concerts. Right, yeah. So this was the death metal one? Yeah, or punk. Yeah. Punk. Um, those death metal guys are crazy. Yeah, throw them some compliments, too. Be like, I really like your uh, torn black tee. Yeah. Um, it looks like you're in touch with death and... You know, I think in different circumstances, we would really get along and we would have pretty interesting conversations and dive deep. Abraham Lincoln, do yeah. I not destroy my enemy when I make him my friend? Mm. What a beast. Yeah. I love that movie. Lincoln? Yeah. The best, dude. So good. Like 30 great actors. And every actor is like a, an Oscar winner. You're like, what the yeah. fuck's going on here? Dude? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like a two line part. It's like Adam Driver. Yeah, yeah. Strider's arch nemesis. <laughs> That's one of my favorite beefs. And I think when I think of Lincoln, like the actual Abraham Lincoln, I yeah. think of Daniel Day Lewis. No, yeah, for sure. That's the only Lincoln. Although I no, actually, I I sorry, I take that back. I think of the Disneyland one. Oh, that's my Lincoln. I'm not familiar. Uh, he's an animatron. Uh, so he kind of just says one speech and that's it. But that's how I think of Lincoln. Nice. It's MLK Day today. Oh right, yeah. What up? Happy MLK Day. You're a good dude. You too. <laughs> I'm into MLK, but you for sure, my dog. Oh, yeah. I was like, why are you saying that? <laughs> oh, thanks, dude. Emma, you're, you're a good lady. You're a great person, Emma. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Oh, for sure. For sure. Um, what were you going to say? I was saying I'm starting to feel sick. It, well, I was, I was, so, me? I was no. so arrogant. I was like, it's never going to happen. Everyone else is getting sick. I'm not going to... I do steam rooms. Dude, I literally never think... I literally was looking at you today, and I was like, Chad will never die. There's a tickle in my throat. You're... F- and I'm pissed. <laughs> and I have low energy. I can't think well. That's as bad as it'll get for you, I'm sure. It better. Yeah, no, you're... <laughs> God's looking out for you. So, uh, but to more pressing matters, you, so you broke up with your GF. Yeah, we broke up. It was about as mutual as it could be. That's nice. And it was a good breakup. Yeah. Yeah. And it was hard. I don't know. Maybe we'll get back together in time. Yeah. It was, uh, I do think some of my anxiety was like about maybe wanting to break up and not knowing how, mm. you know, and even some of the stokers writing in about it kind of made me reflect on it more yeah. too. Yeah. But she's great. She's a wonderful, wonderful person. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, uh, you've handled it really well. You've been uh, able to uh, bounce back. I mean, you're pretty much yourself yeah but i'm sorry to hear that though thank you dude appreciate yeah. it man you guys had a good run yeah i've been bummed about it yeah it's funny i talk about being bummed on here a lot but my psychiatrist says i actually don't it's lip service he mm-hmm. says i don't actually let myself feel sad that i just oh, you just talk it out. i just talk it yeah yeah so i'm trying to sin in it more yeah do you are you trying to share it less or yeah do that less and then like just uh, even though I'm sharing it right now in a podcast, and then um, just sit in it more, yeah, and just be like, like not like think my way out of it and be like, he says a lot of the times when I feel physical symptoms when I'm like, oh my knee hurts or my foot hurts, <laughs> he says that's me. I'd rather think that I was 
I had something wrong with my body than actually just sit there and think that I was sad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think it's mostly about my uh, dad. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Because I love him. Yeah. Of course. Beast. Um, I I see moments where you sit in it, though. Oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's what I told my psychiatrist. Yeah. I was like, dude, I don't think that's the problem, man. Like, dude, where yeah. were you two weeks ago? Yeah, exactly. I know. <laughs> you just look over and you're just like... Yeah, Joe told me... Joe and I got a drink. I, I'm not drinking right now, but I went with Joe when he got a drink on Saturday. Yeah. And he called me the next day. He's like, are you all right? You looked like shit last night. <laughs> I was like, physically or emotionally? He's like, both. <laughs> he said, you look dejected. <laughs> I was like, I know, man. But I don't know. It'll be all right. It's funny the way he shows concern. It's the best. Yeah, because he called me to follow up. It's yeah. like incredibly decent of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You look like shit last night. <laughs> well, I don't feel that great. What? I know. And then he, so he came home last night, and I was like, okay, I want to look better. Yeah. And he comes in. I'm like, how do I look? He's like, the same. <laughs> There's no glow. You're sad. Yeah, exactly. Dumbass. Yeah, he's so funny. Don't. No vaping. There's no jeweling in here. Okay. He's opening for Bobby Lee now. It's awesome. Come on. Yeah. Huge. Big Joe. Big Joe. I saw an Instagram story saying going deep and it was it was Joe up yeah. on stage. I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. Cool as fuck, man. That's awesome. Yeah. One of the funniest guys He's ever. He's the best. What's going on with you, dog? What is going on? I um You're hitting the vids hard. You got a system now? What's up? You got a system now for video games. Oh, dude, yeah. I've been addicted to Jedi Fallen Order. How, how deep into it are you? Like, how I, far along? Well, I have such an addictive personality that I get obsessed with things. So I'm trying to crush it. I'm just trying to beat it as fast as I can so I lose that uh, obsession. But I, um, I'm i almost done with the game. I've gone to... Okay, so I went to Kashyyyk. I went to some other planet. Legit. I went to Dothomir. Oh, uh, dude, nice. Dealt with the Witch Lady and the Undead and just sabered the fuck out of them. And then... Um, and I, I, you know, I met some challenges along the way. I had to face a lot of stormtroopers, but I learned some powers, built up my skill tree, and uh, just went to the Jedi Temple, rebuilt my lightsaber, so I got a double blade with a pink, um, pink, fuck, what's the crystal? Damn it. I, Emma, do you know what the crystal is in Star Wars? Not off the top Kyber, of my head. Kyber crystals. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kyber crystals. I got new Kyber crystals. I made them pink, because real dudes have pink sabers kind of like a dog's dong um <laughs> and uh now i don't know what i'm doing i'm back on dothamir oh nice dude and uh, i think i'm gonna face vader pretty soon so so you went the light direction or or you you it's the same track but right yeah wh- it's where a, are you at force wise oh force wise i can do the push i can do the pull i can push a lot of dudes uh, oh, in terms of like light or dark? Yeah. Oh, I thought you meant my tricks. No, no, I meant that too, but those are light tricks that you're describing. Okay, so, right. so the character is Cal, pretty standard uh, white dude, um, sort of pretty noble. You know, he doesn't really seem to be tempted by the dark side at all. He's kind of just like very... What kind of white? Like Irish? He does look Irish, yeah. He's got like chestnut kind of hair. Nice. Looks a little bit red, but, you know, very principled. He's like, I'm light for sure. Uh, and... Um, not tempted by the dark side at all. He just wants to... But he does have this uh, boss, Seer, who she used the dark side once to uh, take up some stormtroopers, and she, so she cut herself off from the force. So he's sort of dealing with that. He's like, what? My mentor used the dark side? So, like, how do I reckon with that? And, um, yeah, so it's been a good journey. Um, I've been uh, making excuses not to hang out with people to <laughs> make it so I can finish this fucking game. Yeah. Uh, Here, I'll call you. Yeah, what's up? Dog, what's up? Oh, hey, what's up, dude? Dude, we're at Busby's East. You want to you swing by? That's a pause. What's up? Where are you at? Busby's East. You want to swing by and grab some brew daddies? Um, oh, I'd love to, man, but uh, I got to clean my sheets. I've been jizzing all over them, dude. Uh, all right. Dude, use a tissue next time. No, I like using the sheets. I got to clean them later. Wow. Does that work? Do, do you want to try another one? Sure. Chad, what up, dude? Oh, what's up? Dude, I got an extra ticket to uh, see Louis Capaldi at the Will Turn. Come with. Oh, fuck yeah, dude. Oh, that sounds so cool. Oh, crap. My brother's calling. Do you want to call me back after? 
Yeah, I think I gotta go to New York. I'll see ya. All right, later. Dude, these... Chad. What's up, dude? Hey, man. Uh, me and a couple of the guys are gonna do a weekend trip in Catalina. Oh, sick. Yeah, oh, fuck yeah, dude. We're gonna camp on the backside and uh, observe the bison and uh, go fishing for Dorado. Oh, that sounds so freaking cool. Have fun. <laughs> dude, that's crazy, dude. That's how, like, every phone call has been. Dude. Emma, do you want to call us? Can we call you to hang out? Or do you want do you want to call us to hang out? Yeah, we'll call you to hang out. Okay, you can call me. It'll be, you want to do both? Yeah, well, you want to do it on speakerphone? Like a three-way call? Yeah, yeah, you're on speaker. Hey, Emma, what's up? Emma, what up? Not much. What's going on? Chilling. Just chilling. Doing Hell the pod. Yeah. yeah, do you want to come over and do the podcast? Fuck yeah, why not? Nice. Nice. We'll see you soon. All right, we'll see you there. Later. It's about how long I like my phone calls to be. Nice. Yeah, dude, I think every phone call, especially ones that are work-related, go five to ten minutes extra every time. Yeah, because there's too many dumb pleasantries. And yeah, they're just, they're like, fuck pleasantries. they're running around the same, like, topics over and over again. Yeah, you gotta ask me the same question six different ways, and I'll answer <laughs> it six different ways, and then we're good. Yeah, so we'll see you on a Saturday the 2nd then, right? I'm like, confirm. They're like, great. Yeah. For the second. It's a Saturday. Right. All so, right. So Saturday, and we'll come by at two, and it might last a couple hours. So that'll probably take us to uh, about four or five. I'm like, yeah. So we'll call it like two to five on the second, if that works for you. Yeah, yeah, that that works. You sure that okay? That works for you. Yeah. Wait, it's two to five on the second. Yeah, it's second. Uh, it's a Saturday. It's like two to five, like the afternoon. Oh crap! I can't make it. Uh, I have to go to the Apple Store. I'll see you guys. Dude, you're gaming again. <laughs> I looked at the weather. It's going to be about uh, 75 degrees. I think I'm going to wear blue jeans. Yeah, cool. Bring a jacket, though, because it might cool down at night, you know, right. in case we run long. Yeah, it might go, yeah, because it's a couple hours, but if we go to 6, it says it could drop to 60. Yeah, you, you don't want to be cold. I know. I'm like, dude, <laughs> hang up, dude. <laughs> hang up the phone. Go fuck yourself. Send me an email. Yeah, I'm like, please stop doing this to me. <laughs> Please. You're and then, like, they text you the miserable. morning of, hey, we're still good for uh, two to five today? Yeah, well, oh. then they reschedule. Then they're like, sorry, we can't do that day. You're like, yeah. all right, dude. Well, what the fuck, man? Dude, Are you going to repay me? John Mulaney is right. Canceling plans is the best feeling ever. Yeah, he says it's better than heroin. <laughs> it is. Yeah. I agree with that. When you're like, you know what? I'm just going to do myself a solid and I'm not going to go out and I'm going to stay home on my own couch by myself. Feels so good. Yeah, dude, we, we, were, uh, we were hungover. For the holidays, and we had something. You remember that? Uh, it was on Saturday. We had an yeah. like, appointment. I was like, "Hey, dude, uh, I think you want to like push to like three. First you know, time, like, yeah. And I'm like, "How oh, we just like fucking cancel? <laughs> First time you've ever canceled anything? <laughs> yeah, it was incredible. <laughs> I was like, dude, I, I laughed a little bit. I yeah, hung up. I was like, holy shit, <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, I was like, that's never happened before ever. I was pretty hung, dude. Dude, you got after it. We had a good time. I threw up that night. Nice. I came out of the bathroom. Oh, yeah, like you three did. of the dudes were waiting. They're like, are you all right? I'm like, I, I threw up. <laughs> After like four beers and a shot. I'm sorry, stokers. The truth will set you free. All right, dude, should we answer some questions? Yes, sir. I have very limited battery on my laptop, so uh, we'll have to. I got a charger it. if you need it. Is it. Does it work <laughs> with this one? It's got the lightning jack? Yep. Oh, dude, yeah. Can I grab that? Yeah, let me grab it for you. Emma, you're a legend. Thank you. What up, Kings of Stoke? First off, just wanted to say I'm a big fan of the pod. I've been listening for around a month now and has definitely helped change my view on life and how I live day to day. Oh, that's nice, man. Thank you. That being said, I find myself in a bit of a situation. I know how you guys feel about these kinds of questions, but feel like this might be a little different situation. I graduated from college last year and moved around seven hours north for grad school. Two years ago, I met this girl through a group, and we immediately clicked and became good friends and have stayed friends since. When I first met her, unknown to me, she was in a couple year relationship but I thought she was awesome and I really liked her after finding out she was in a relationship I still hung out with her and we became friends now she broke up with that guy around six months ago and I find myself talking to her a little bit more than we did in the past I'm definitely to start catching heavy feelings for her I can't keep her off my mind and I think she's perfect I'm just not exactly sure if and how or how I should tell her how I feel about her Right now, she's still in college, seven hours from me, but is about to graduate and move to within an hour drive. She's told me that right now she's not looking for a relationship simply because she's about to graduate and move, but I think it could possibly work because she's moving pretty close to me. I'm just not sure what to do in this situation. Maybe wait to tell her how I feel until after she moves. Any help is greatly appreciated. P. 
P.S. Love seeing you guys on Hawaii Five O. It is one of my favorite shows and got me super stoked to see you guys. My favorite pod to collaborate with my favorite show. Oh, it's so nice to see you, man. Thank, Thank you, you, dude. Uh, I think you're thinking about it too much, man. I mean, you know, she's moving close to you, and you guys are talking a little bit more. You guys are mixing it up. And did he mention if he's asked her out on a date yet? Uh, no, never. Because she was in a relationship when they first uh, met. Yeah, ask her out on a date. Take her to Chili's. Get her a Corona Rita. Sounds great, man. Yeah. Yeah, and I think I think uh, it's great, man. It could all be great. Just ask her out. But I do think you're in a little bit of fantasy. Not not like it can't happen, but like you're 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 saying <clears throat> like I can't keep her off my mind, and I think she's perfect. Mm. You know, you're gonna feel that way about different people at different times in your life. But the reality is, you know, she, she's probably a complicated person, and 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 you guys could still be a great fit, but. Maybe like uh, just breathing a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. and being like, you know, this is just a person I like right now and I'll ask her out and we'll see where it goes from there. But I, I wouldn't make it your be all end all. But I, I like where you're coming from with the with being romantic, though. Yeah, I, I, I like what you're saying. I think uh, when people say, you know, when you think that someone is just like an angel and you can't stop thinking about them, you think it's like the only person you're ever going to think about like ever again. Yeah. And so it's, it's, it's not, it, and when people say like, you can think that about a lot of people, you're like, what, how? Yeah. But it's nice to hear that perspective to sort of get your dome a little bit straight. Yeah. Just stay romantic, but. Yeah. It's, 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 it's like a hard, mixture of yeah. romanticism and realism and a little bit of stoicism. Yeah, just you'd be like a little bit laughing at yourself, like man, I'm I'm being a little crazy right now. But you know what? I feel how I feel, and I gotta follow that out. Yeah, yeah, dude. It reminds me, some stoker messaged me. And he's like, dude, I'm in love with this girl, but she says she doesn't want to be with me. What do I do? And I said, you move on with your life. You just live as best you can, and <clears throat> you know, find something you're passionate at. Get really good at it. Yeah, you know all that stuff. Yeah. One day later, he messages me, dude, I'm in love with another girl. What do I do? I go, this is a different girl? He goes, yeah. I'm like, whoa, buddy, you move fast. Yeah. I like it. Hey, I'm all for those fantasies of you guys rolling in a field, sucking face, and then you milk a cow together and you drink the milk. That's great. Yeah. That was my frequent one. Get drenched. Yeah. What's up, boys? Pretty much my whole life I've had a massive crush on this girl in my friend group. She has known about it for the longest time and has shot my every, my every advance down. Recently, however, I was just told by my boy who's dating her friend that she's now into me. While I trust my boy, I haven't noticed a difference in her towards me when we hang out. How should I go about this situation? I don't know, man. <laughs> she likes you. <laughs> trust your friend. Next time you're with her, when the right moment comes, you know, talk for a while and, and build up to it, but when the right moment comes, either you tell her how you feel or you, you ask her if you can kiss her or if the moment's really right, you, you try and give her a respectful kiss. Yeah, dude. I say shoot your shot. It's always worth it. Worst that yeah. happens is they say no, and it's awkward for like a second, and then you're adults and you forget about it. Nice. Yeah, I, I the reason I laughed is because I just remember like myself in like fifth and sixth grade when you're just asking like everyone, you're like, what What Ariel say? What she say? What she say? She like me? No, she thinks you're a douche. Oh fuck. And then you ask someone else, what What Ariel say? She likes you. I'm like, what? No way. Uh. Beating around the bush is never going to get you to where you want to go. You know, you just got to go for it and just be like, whatever her name is, Victoria, do you want to know a secret? I want to take you to Applebee's. Dude, that was like a poem. Thanks. Dude, when I was <laughs> angling to ask out my first girlfriend, she was a childhood friend of Strider's. Yeah. And someone goes, dude, I think she's got a crush on JT. And Strider goes... No, nah, dude, she's cool. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't even remember saying it. Really? I'm like, yeah. And it stuck with me for so long. I was like, yeah. you motherfucking piece of shit. Yeah, yeah. You son of a bitch. God damn you. Uh, I remember when there's this girl, this girl Sam, who uh, she was like my first like crush in like fourth grade because like her friend Olivia gave me a note. I was like, Sam is gonna be on Instant Messenger tonight. Message her there. And I messaged her. I'm like, what up? And uh, I was so shy that I never spoke to her in person and I was like I can't do it I can't and then she dated my brother and I got so heated about it that I was like we were at like a uh, we were at the, like the swim 
we were at like the country club or whatever, the pool. And they were like, they were like being all cutesy in the pool. And just to show my dominance, I was doing butterfly stroke Dude. the entire time, flexing my delts. And I came out just the lats were swollen and uh, I just looked at them, beelined it to the locker room and I hung dong. You and your hot revenge body just nah, strutting. <laughs> yeah, I was pretty small back then, but thank you. But lean. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, just straight butterfly. That's awesome, dude. Just for like an hour. With those young joints, yeah. able to withstand that, withstand that. Yeah. And I think she noticed. For sure. Yeah. I bet you if you called her today, she'd be like, you'd be like, this is Chad? She's like, with the butterfly stroke? Mm. You'd be like, yeah. She's like, oh, wow, your delts are so pronounced. I'm like, yeah. What's up, bros? I've recently been lacking, and I have decided I need to get stronger physically. With that being said, I'm also thinking this is a great time <laughs> to start reading and getting the mental right. Just wanted to know some books that you would encourage me to read so I can gain some knowledge. On another note, your pod and Joe Rogan's pod have inspired a friend and I to make one. Thanks for getting me stoked when the times are tough. Say what up to the main man, Strider, and give Joe's hog a tap. I'm sorry, what was the question? He wants to know what to read. Oh. I think you gotta do Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. I think you gotta do The Untethered Soul by someone else. Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain. You got anything else? Yeah, when I first got into reading, I liked Christopher Hitchens' Letters to a mm -hmm. Young Contrarian, which can make you very annoying, but it's cool and it's brief. Um, David Foster Wallace's uh, Consider the Lobster and a Supposedly Fun Thing I'll Never Do Again. And then I love the novels of Richard Price. If you're young, especially, uh, like The Wanderers is very relatable, but his best stuff is uh, Lush Life or Clockers. And uh, they're like crime stories, but like he says, crime's just a lazy way into a plot. It's really about who these people are. And his dialogue is rich. Also, uh, Joseph Campbell's A Beast, The Power of Myth. Yeah, absolutely. Hero's Journey. I love that stuff. And... Uh, Get some history in there, dude. Read about Churchill or B. Franklin. Please. Freaking B. Franklin. Read about cool dudes and ladies. Yeah, that is inspiring. I like Deep Work by Cal Newport. That guy's a beast. It's all about disconnecting and getting into your dome. Let's uh, go. Uh, Emma, do you have any books you like? Um, I read a really good book. It was over the summer. I'm trying to remember the name of it, but it's an, a book of interviews with Judd Apatow, and he like interviews oh, all the people yeah. he's oh, worked yeah. with and stuff, and it's really good. I highly recommend it. It's a nice, it's kind of a little inside baseball-y, but like in a cool way. Yeah, I've read that. That's good. Yeah, I, that you, one was really good. Poking a Dead Frog, that's a good one. It's, it's all comedy writers. Yeah, oh, Mike yeah. Sachs, that yeah. one's good. I like um, a good book that that's like real like interviews like that, but like also kind of funny. Sick like, in the head. Yeah, yeah, a nice way to like make yourself laugh. <clears throat> yeah, that was really good. Oh, this is an interesting <laughs> one. Title, is Alex Bregman still a chill dude? What up, Brad and Leo? Oh, my bad. Always get my legendary duos mixed up. Oh, <laughs> dude, you know how to cut to the core of me. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, dude. Oh, man. Thank you, dude. I'm writing you with the moral dilemma regarding the Astros cheating scandal. I already have my mind made up on how I feel about the coaching staff in front office, but I don't know how to feel about the players, specifically Alex Bregman. Breg became my favorite player in the bigs after listening to his guest episode on the pod when I realized he's an absolute chiller who gets after it hard and hits dingers harder. Now it's pretty evident he was involved in the sign stealing cheating scandal which is super unchill. I don't want to judge his entire persona based off one moral mishap, but I'm for sure peed off he cheated the game that he's so passionate for. I'd love to hear if you think Bregg is still an absolute beauty like I did after hearing him on the pod, or if we should rethink his legendary status as a ball player and bro. I appreciate the response, and thanks for always keeping me stoked, Chad and JT. Dude, that's a tough question because he's our dog. He was on the pod. Yeah. He's nice enough to be, be a guest and say what up. But, you know... If the reports are true, he was complicit in this scandal. Yeah. And um, was active in it. Active in it. And people make mistakes, you know, when there's group think, it's hard to resist. So. Yeah, I mean, I think it's not chill. Yeah. If he cheated. Yeah. But he can return to chillness through a life of, you know, doing better too. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, dude, I'm not like perfect. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I did stupid shit um 
think when I first started doing stand up, I would do like I would do like Hannibal Burris jokes and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, um, which is like such an embarrassing thing to admit, but I did. So yeah. um, I don't know. I, I I don't think it's cool to cheat though. And I, the people I admire the most don't cheat. They have yeah. strong ethics when it comes to that stuff. But yeah, it, it's it's tough to. Um, now I'm not sympathize. I'm not trying to, you know, sympathize too much. But it's it's when you're exposed to a situation like that, and you have, it, you know, it can be tough to resist the temptation. Um, and so sometimes, if you're around that for a long time, maybe you'll resist for a little bit, and then you'll get caught up in it, and next thing you know, you're complicit in everything. So, you know, a lot of times people get swept up in it, uh, but it definitely was not chill. There's a time when, uh, you know, in high school on my e-contest, we had all the answers and we were all cheating on it. And uh, I did, uh, and then he like caught wind of it. So, and then, so this one test came up and I answered everything from like, I didn't study at all. I answered everything from the, uh, the last test, basically cheating. And he caught me and he didn't get me in trouble. He was just like, I wasn't chill, dude. And, uh, you know your supply and demand is low. And uh, and I just felt like a doucher. And I tried to be improve myself after that. Yeah. But that's another example. I just got caught up in it. I was like, oh, the option for something easier is right there. I'm going to take it. Yeah. It's a good question. What's up, you DDs of Stoke? You guys are absolute beauts, and I think it's dope that you answer all your fans. JT responded to me when I sent him a video of some kid shredding his favorite karaoke song. Sorry if this is a little long, but I think I can shed some light on the discussion about if a bigger dong produces a stronger stream than you had a few pods ago. I couldn't find any peer-reviewed studies done on this, but I am in medical school, so I can tell you that the dong is comprised of erectile tissue, which is basically a sponge, and their urethra runs through this erectile tissue. I hypothesize that since a large dong has more of this tissue, it can lead to decreased cross-sectional area of the urethra, and via Bernoulli's equation, that would mean there needs to be an increase in velocity. So big dong equals stronger stream. I also have a quick question, if that's cool. I recently asked this... You can ask any question after that fire explanation. Whoa. I recently asked out this girl out in my class class and she said she isn't looking for something right now we are still friends and hang out a good amount what do you recommend i do in order to make her think she does she does want something right now my game plan is just to be present and be me but i'm not sure if there's anything else i should do thanks for being dude you're a killer bro i mean you know stuff you send videos of your friends shredding at karaoke you're a generous guy who wants to celebrate his dogs you understand you understand mathematics and science and you can contextualize that into dong talk I mean, bro, you don't have to do anything. It's coming out, baby. Keep being you. Spread the good word of dong inertia. Velocity, terminal velocity of urine coming out of the hog. I wonder if there's as much cool math about lady streams. Oh, good question. Well, we can put it out to the stokers, and I'm sure we'll get some fire intel. Do you think Kegel's... Uh, help the stream? Maybe. I don't see why not. It's like all the muscles in there, right? Keeping yeah. it tight. Yeah. So you can really just like projectile it. Yeah. You really like shoot your shot. Oh, oh. Fire, dude. Um. <clears throat> but yeah, this guy's a beast. Just keep in you. Yeah. Keep digging into that knowledge. I like that. What up, dogs? I kind of have a sitch that I thought would be a perfect question for you guys. My best friend used to drop dong all the time at parties, and it got all of our levels of stoke to skyrocket into the atmosphere. He even had an alternative personality when he dropped dong of a pro wrestler called the Annihilator. It was so rad, and it got everyone's stoke levels to the next level. All the dudes, girls, everyone. But he has not dropped dong in many moons, and our stoke tanks, when we were all together, has not ever been close to full. <laughs> Is there anything I can say to him that maybe he'll one day drop dong again and get our levels of stoke to that level again? Also, shout out to you for you guys for talking about driving stick shift on a couple <laughs> pods ago. Very rad. Yeah, I mean, dude, driving stick. It takes me a couple rounds to get it back into my system and remember how to do it. It's the best. But once I'm flowing, it feels good, dude. Next car, I want to I want to get stick. Uh, but I don't know if they're uh, selling manual transmission anymore. They're doing it. You get good, baby. You, yeah. might, you might have to get it custom. I'm going to have to get a Toyota Supra. Oh. I was in Chile yeah. driving a little bit. It's all stick down there. And me and two dudes I, I met, a couple of European guys, one of which who I think I mentioned on the pod, was very 
condescending to me when I predicted that Jon Snow was the son of Rhaegar Targaryen. He's like, I don't think that's possible. Oh, what a silly, what a silly idea. I don't have his contact info, but what's up now, dog? Um, but sorry, it's way too bad. No, no, keep yeah, it coming. I was so fired up. I was baked out of my mind on an edible too. Uh, we met a girl out there when we were hiking and she was like, oh, I need a ride back. And I, I was like, well, I'm driving, but I, I'm just learning how to drive stick. And he was like, no, he's a very good driver. Stalled twice on the way home, but kept us alive. Yeah. Let's go. I love it. Uh, dude, with the Annihilator, uh, you know what I would do? You know what gets me is when people bring up old memories, like epic stories involving him dropping Dong. And they're like, dude, remember that time when you dropped Dong at Terry's B-Day party? And, uh, you know, you put it in the pizza. I don't know. Sorry. Uh, <clears throat> just keep coming up with stories like that him dropping dong and how it made you feel how it made the squad feel you know just the sight of his hog coming out just letting loose embracing the streak boosting stoke wherever he goes just letting himself fly be free be happy and be himself um, just keep conjuring up those feelings within him stir it up before you know it his pants are flying off. You'll be seeing that dong. Dude, I'm just overwhelmed with compassion in all directions here because I get where you're coming from, where you want to see that dong and you want to get excited. And, you know, there, I think the best way to do it is get another person to start dropping dong. And then mm. that person, oh, right. you know, like the rehabilitator, Chain and then reaction. everyone's talking about that dude. Yeah. And then your buddy's going to get that competitive spirit coming back, yeah. you know, and be like, what? They think he drops dong better than me? And then he'll come out of retirement. Yeah. You know what I mean? He'll start dropping dong. And I feel for this guy because, you know, I've been the guy who drops dong, and sometimes you just want to rebrand, you know? Jordan took a couple years off from basketball, you know? <laughs> it's like uh, he might just be recharging the bats. He might not be done forever. But if he is, you know, we still got to love him. It's like the documentary Hoop Dreams where everyone's – super invested in this high school kid becoming an NBA player. And he's like, people always tell me like, hey, don't forget about me when you make it. And he's like, yeah, well, don't forget about me if I don't. Dude, I like where your head's out. You're talking about like a house of dong cards. Yeah. One drops, they all do. Mm-hmm. Um, so start that chain reaction, you know. Maybe get the guy from the last question to come in and talk about the uh, physics of it. What do they say in the Three Musketeers? Drop dong. One and done, one for all. For the Dongathon? Mm hmm. D'Artagnan. I know what they say. There's a lot of nougat in this bar. <laughs> Dude, I think musketeer swords are the weakest of all the swords, too. <laughs> yeah. Those skinny sabers, dude. Oh, lame. I'd much rather have a broadsword. Yeah. Yeah, what would you want? Would you want sort of like a, a smaller, super sharp, maybe katana? Okay, okay. Katana. Or a broadsword. What's a katana? Like? Is that like a samurai sword? Samurai sword, yeah. Samurai sword. You want a Hattori Hanzo. That's what I'm doing. Katana. Yeah. Uh, so you can kill Bill. Uh, yeah, dude, broadswords, I mean, you're swinging it around. doesn't look elegant. doesn't look cool. It's power-based. A katana, yeah. I'll take speed and agility every time. Absolutely. Like Conor McGregor said. <laughs> Timing beats speed and precision beats power. Man, that fight, 40 seconds. I mean, I, all the people who are saying it's a fix, I get it. I mean, what would be better for the company than having Connor just come out and dominate someone and look like he's totally back? But Cerrone gets knocked out a lot lately, although he's a legend. I saw uh, Dan Bilzerian, he bet like a million dollars on Cerrone. No, he didn't. Yeah, he, he posted a photo of like a pile of cash and he's like, for Cerrone. And then I guess he posted another thing. Well, shit. Bill Zarian's a guy I'd love to see sad. I know yeah. he's talked about it a little bit. But yeah. like, I remember I partied on a boat one time in Cabo. Yeah. And I was so debaucherous. And when I got home, I just bawled my eyes out. I, yeah. like, I just wonder if Bill Zarian's like, oh, no, I'm fucking all these chicks. And I'm shooting machine guns. The fuck, what the fuck am I doing, man? Yeah. I don't know who the fuck I am. Yeah. He's got to have those moments. I think so. Bill Zarian's kind of a cool last name. Yeah, it is. Bilzerian. Dan Bilzerian. Do you think you, if you were Dan Bilzerian, do you think you'd be happy? No. Hey, Dan. I mean, there's aspects. I think it'd be fun, yeah. but I don't think I'd be happy. I don't need, I think you'd be happy for like a week. Yeah. I don't know. I'd definitely like to drop into that once in a while, but if, I don't know. <clears throat> what do you think, Emma? Do you, what do you think about him? Do you know him? 
I don't think I know who that is. Oh man, he's like this like uh he's kind of like the modern <laughs> era Hugh Hefner, but there's like more it's more testosterone infused. He just like posts photos all day of him with like really hot women and he's like shooting machine guns all the time. And he, he says like douchey things like my accountant tried to tell me not to spend a million dollars today, but I asked him if I was still rich, told him to fuck off, stuff like that. Doesn't sound like my type of dude, so I'm not surprised I don't follow him, but maybe I should go check it out. Yeah. Yo, dudes, first and foremost, thank you for everything you guys believe in. Hopefully the gang is all here for this one or quite honestly, maybe hope that I just get an email back. Not here for the clout. So, gents, I've been suffering for depression for about two years now. Some days good, some bad. I'm constantly dealing with never feeling good enough for my girlfriend, my family, or work. I've been in the military since 2010, and unfortunately, it has allowed me to develop a lot of <laughs> fucked up feelings. I constantly, I constantly think my significant other is never pleased. I constantly overthink and pry during every moment in all arguments. It is leading me back down a dark path that I used to find myself at home about two years ago. I was cheated on, lied to, and ultimately deceived by someone I wanted to spend a life with. Ex-girlfriend, a.k.a. homewrecker. I've moved past it all, met someone amazing, work has been better, family and friends all great, but unfortunately facing these demons I've created internally when things get sticky with my new girl. Chad and JT, I want you guys to know that listening to your podcast has given me a lot of insight on how to live in shitty times. I've developed a fucked up mentality that I'm never good enough or everyone is out to get me. It destroys my self-esteem and depletes my stoke tank. I've been reading some decent books. Please suggest some of your favorites. Been hitting the slopes with my friend from work, staying away from drinking, and just trying to find help where I can. Most recently, I wanted to end my life, but I, I, but I knew it was never something I'd follow through with. My lady friend and I are no longer dating because of me constantly overthinking and creating situations and scenarios that might not be true. Long story short, fucking up our love life. I'm at a loss right now and have been struggling hard. I feel I know the answers in which you guys can help. I feel I feel I know the answers in which you guys can help me out with. I would just love to hear if you guys have dealt with suicidal thoughts, how you've made it through bad breakups, and what you guys would do when you exceed past rock bottom. I'm in the gym daily. I'm reading a chapter a night from any book I'm told to read, and mostly ones I really think I'd enjoy. I'm seeking professional help, and I'm nervous as to what I should talk about. My girlfriend recently broke up, suggested me to seek help, and I'm going to. JT, I've heard once or twice you've sought out therapy, and how does one begin? Where do you start? I deal with depression, depression, anxiety, and overall my ability to overly critically think about absolutely everything I pursue in life. You guys are doing a justice society by shredding the stoke to those who listen. Much love, dudes, and hopefully I can receive some dope feedback. Yeah, you know, after after college, I, I struggled with drinking a little bit. Um, it was like a it was like a year or two where I was just like drinking way too much, and it got to the point where I'd like start drinking in the morning, and uh, so I took a break from it. I, I I stopped drinking for a while. I went to therapy for like a few months, and uh, that's sort of what inspired me to get on this like track of like doing things that 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 make you feel good in like a um a real way because I, I started to recognize those urges to like drink or you know drink a bunch of coffee or do anything to just sort of like take your mind off of uh um just to give you that I, I was always in search of that like up feeling um and the more I engaged in healthy behavior and started becoming more sensitive to, to diet and, you know, thinking about my feelings, honesty, um, just sort of seeking out as much healthy behavior as I can, the happier I got and the more I was able to sustain it. Um, so that's just from my personal experience. I know, you know, you're going through some tough stuff, but I would say the best thing for me whenever I've been low is I've Whenever I, it, it's so hard to leave the house, but once you leave the house and you get out into the real world and you just start doing things that you know are good for you, it just feeds your soul, I think. And you just, it compounds and compounds and you just build on that and build on that. And then you're able to build um, a sustainable contentment, I guess is the right word. But, um, and then it's also just finding something that you just, finding a path or a mission in your life that you want to, um, that fuel, that, that you're never, it's not like you're really searching for an end. It's like, you're just searching for continual improvement and just, um, continual progress. I think, I think progress, making progress in certain areas in your life is sort of the key to happiness I've found. So, uh, I hope that made sense. I'm kind of my domes all over the place, but yeah, man. 
uh that's what's up yeah my dog i'm sorry you're suffering man um i think you're being really hard on yourself i think you're uh you're being hard on yourself and it's it's kind of grinding you down and i know what that's like um you know you, you say you're uh worried that you're letting down your girlfriend your family and your work i bet you everyone at those places thinks you're pretty great yeah and i think they're and I, I I, think they all want you to be happy and that they're all probably pretty proud of you. Um, it sounds like you do a lot of good stuff. I think maybe um, it's hard to be compassionate to ourselves sometimes. It's easy to dismiss what we're feeling or tell us that we're stupid or soft or, or weak or that we're focused on the wrong stuff. And, you know, sometimes you got to be tough, but sometimes you just got to just let yourself be. Like if one of your really good friends came to you and like told you all this, you'd probably be like, dude, you're great, man. I love you. And I, I just want you to be happy and, and you're doing great. And, and I know you're going to get through this, but I think you got to say that to yourself, you know, treat yourself like how you would treat one of your really good buddies and just be, yeah, be compassionate to yourself because you deserve it. Like you deserve to feel how you feel. And, um, and yeah, I've, I've had dark, dark thoughts, man, all the way to the worst. And, uh, I think sometimes that was my inability to feel my sadness because so I was just looking for a way out you know sometimes you have an awkward conversation you just want to run out of the room instead of just sitting there and like feeling those feelings so I think when you go to therapy and you definitely should you just got to sit in it <coughs> and really and and you know deal with it or it will deal with you and uh, and I know you're gonna do great man you're a great guy you you got a lot of good stuff in your future don't beat yourself up Life's already hard enough. You deserve you deserve to be gentle with yourself, brother. And uh, thank you for serving, man. It's a you know it's a big commitment. Um, should probably maybe try some meditations. Oh yeah, that's great. Oh, hell yeah, because yeah. I always find that those help when I have really dark thoughts. Like it's a really good way to try to clear your mind and find the good ones again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love meditating. That's that's good stuff. Yeah, I've been doing. I do like I've been doing like breathing exercises, meditation. I found this new app, Sync Tuition, that I listen to. It's like a meditation before I go to bed. It just puts me right to sleep. Sleep is huge. I've been, uh, ever since I've been like more uh, aware of like health and stuff, I've been, uh, you're able to see like how much like lack of sleep and poor nutrition affects not only your body, but your, your state of mind. Um, so I just find that those are, some real tangible things that can that can help and also yeah you know so like jt was saying self-love self self-compassion self it's it, it i've always found it, it the idea of self-love has seemed like such always seemed like such a strange thing to me i'm like well, i'm like what love myself that's so weird yeah because it feels like we're already our mo the most imp i'm like i do i'm the most important person in my life yeah I, i've never yeah, it took like a therapist to be like, be like, you hate yourself. And I'm like, I never even like thought about that. Right. I'm like, what are you talking about? But then once you start to like understand it, it's, it seems weird, but I think the more you, you just meditate on it, think about it, then you're able to, to develop that. Cause I think most people grow up, um, without the right foundation to have self-love yeah we don't get the tools all the time and it's no one's fault but or yeah. sometimes it is but so oftentimes it's not we don't always yeah. get the tools to deal with what we experience yeah i mean it's like you go into the world you you know you start dealing with social things and it's like um yeah it's so easy to uh unless you're like a freaking fire baseball player right out the bat those guys probably deal with self hatred too. Though. And they're scared too. Yeah. They're just better at they compartmentalize. Like I mean, you know, I respect the fuck out of people who can do that. They put but, it in the swing. But not but not everyone's the same. And and yeah. uh and yeah, uh just be nice to yourself. And it's good you're getting help, man. And keep writing in. We'll we'll email you back and we'll 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 have a dialogue. Always get to reach <laughs> out too. Yeah, I think you'll find like most it's crazy. Like when I talk to most people too it's like, and it helps me. Most people are like, want to help. If you tell most people like, hey, I'm not feeling great. They'll be like, hey man, it's all good. Yeah. You know, it's not always the perfect thing that they say, yeah. but 
most people we want to live by other people's ha happiness, not by their sadness. Yeah. It's a, Ch a Charlie Chaplin movie. You know what I do? I, I, I watch Golden Retrievers. Because dogs always have the best. I mean, I watch all dogs. Because they live life. They have the best approach to life ever. Dude, and putting in... Always stoked. Putting in smooth stimulation, dude. Yeah. Like, when I'm feeling super fucked, I can't watch, like, dark shit. No, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just watch, like, I meditate or I watch, like, waves. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Get some tranquility around you. Yeah. Watch some comedy. Get inspired. Watch Brad Pitt in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Just watch him drive. That Hell makes yeah. me happy. Hell yeah. All right, dude. Let's transition. Thank you, Stokers, for all the questions. Oh, should we do a mid-roll? Oh, yeah. Guys, I'm interrupting this podcast to let you know once again that we are brought to you by Manscaped. Manscaped, thank you so much for keeping our trims pubed, for looking after our hogs, for making sure that our dong pieces are looking fresh and hanging well because when you take care of your pubes, that translates to your soul. The pubes enter the sixth chakra of the body, which is the pubal chakra, and that is the energy center that fuels your entire dongle region and makes the hair grow and the, you know, sexual pheromones and those hormones just circulate through your body, dude. And that makes you horny, happy, and healthy. So make sure that you're trimming. And you're trimming. Guys, they have a new product coming out, the Lawnmower 3.0. I mean, these guys are at the forefront of dong trimming technology. I mean, you know... Think back to the 1930s. What did they have? Straight razors? I'm not taking that near my pubes. Can you imagine if Teddy Roosevelt had the lawnmower 2.0? I can't, dude. I can't either. I mean, he was a rough rider. Yeah. I can't imagine him as a smooth rider. He would have killed probably 10 times more bears if he yeah. had trimmed pubes. He was, a, he was a little dude when he was growing up, too, and then he just said, I will make myself strong. Yeah. Yeah, that guy could compartmentalize. Yeah. His wife died one night giving mm. birth to his daughter i think they both passed damn they said he sobbed about it the whole night yeah and then the next day he came out and he said i have resolved myself to never cry about that again and wow. he just moved on dude and in that spirit in that light use code go deep 20 at manscape.com dude there's there's another it's from the bully pulpit which is i think the doris goodwin kern's book i only read half but William Taft is the other main character who is also president. Yeah. And uh, there's a story in there that he just, there was a scoundrel in his town and he was a big dude and he just went up to the scoundrel and he like threatened him with violence and made him move out of town. Damn. I like that. Hey, you're a scoundrel and a pervert. Yeah. Dude, pervert. We talked about that, right? Yeah. Greatest insult in the world. You're a pervert. You're a pervert. That's why I was watching uh, Punch Drunk Love this weekend and <laughs> his sister dude yeah. when he calls uh uh philip seymour hoffman that was one of the funniest things oh it's hilarious dude their seen. scenes are so good he's like yeah well you're a pervert i'm warning you what's my name barry egan <laughs> <laughs> when he comes what does philip seymour hoffman say to him at the end when like barry egan's like and this is it like don't ever like he's do like, anything to me again He's like, this is what happens when you become a pervert. Something like that. And then he turns around and then Philip Seymour Hoffman just goes, enough, like yeah. calls it. Yeah, yeah. Like, He's like, all right, it's cool. And flames and he goes, that's it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The best, dude. The greatest. I got to rewatch that so I can quote it correctly. Just the greatest. Barry Egan. I have a love in my life. And it makes me I'm more strong. powerful. I'm yeah. stronger and more powerful than you will ever imagine. I love it, dude. Fuck yeah. I drove to Utah and now I'm back here. <laughs> My dog, what is your beef of the week? My beef of the week has to go with uh, dog hair. Um, I love dogs. Don't get me wrong. I freaking love dogs. But it's all over my car, all over my couch, all over my bed, all over my sweater that I'm wearing right now, you know? Just freaking hair, dude. I mean, what's what's the deal with hair and falling out? Has anyone ever thought about that? Yeah, it's a, there's, there's a part of our testosterone that, that causes it to, to fall out. Oh, I wasn't talking about baldness. I was just oh. talking about in general. Oh, good call. Like, you know, why does it have to do that? In dogs? Yeah, why are they shedding all over the place, you know? Just keep your flow intact. Right. Um, even with humans, too. I mean, humans shed. It's not even balding. They just shed. I mean, come on, hair. 
get it together, you know? Stop getting all over my stuff. You know, I just moved into a new place. Now I have to worry about hair everywhere. And I have to get a freaking lint roller. Dude, I'm stocking up on lint rollers. Those are the best. I know. Everyone should have one in their apartment. I want to spend that money on crisp white tees, though. I don't want to spend that money on lint rollers, you know? I know, dog. There's nothing less stokifying than buying cleaning supplies, even though having a clean place makes you pretty amped. What's your white tea thing? You get the three packs or you get the solos? Well, I go to J. Crew and I get the premium, so. Oh, it's nice, time, dude. But sometimes they have the deals like two for 25. Oh, that's fire. And that, that gets me pretty hard. Gap's not looking good with their new line. It's been a little no. weak. Yeah. Dude, yeah. actually, that's my beef of the week is with the Gap. Yeah. Your new you line is soft. It. Yeah. Urban Outfitters, too. What the <laughs> hell is going on over there? What's going on? Well, I, I haven't it been there It used to be Preppy all. SoCal. Now it's like uh, white urbanite. It's a... Uh, yeah, it's like the wide collars hanging oh, past dude. the knees. Yeah. They don't have regular white tees there. Really? No, everything's got something on it. Closest thing they have is Patagonia. I rock that. But I was really disappointed. I mean, they still got the jeans I like, you know, the light blue. But overall, a very disappointing descent into a style that I don't like from Urban Outfitters. And Gap, you're where I normally go to just get good, solid stuff. And your summer line, no, what, no spring line, I guess, is what we're in right now. Because it's always like a little bit in front week bro yeah and that hurts me dude because i love the gap you know i rep them hard yeah we'll take it to them maybe they'll hear this and they'll get back on track yeah it's all with love i just want you guys to improve dude what's your uh babe of the week who's your babe of the week um my babe of the week is my gf's dog rosie nice um, dude i freaking love dogs i mean i'm gonna get a dog soon a little too busy at the moment but I'm, i think i want to you know i'm not i'm not i'm not getting like a i'm not pushing for a specific one you know because i want to when i see the, i'll go to like a shelter when i see the dog i'm going to feel the connection and we're gonna embrace um but i think it's going to be a black lab oh the best yeah anyways uh i took rosie to my apartment it was just us uh, um it was a saturday night we had a nice little sleepover i gave her water um i gave her some food we ch- just chilled hard on the couch she snuggled with me um and we just had a good time you know i was playing jedi fallen order and then we watched naked gun and then um i you know we just like had a nice little sleepover and um and then when i went to see her the other night she was so excited to see me she like embraced me and then she gave me like a playful bite which means that dogs are so excited they can't even like contain themselves so I'm just stoked to know that we have that bond, that vibe, and Stokers, keep telling us more about your dogs and send us photos so we can say what up. That's nice, dude. Yeah. Was yeah, people your... complain about doggy photos, but it's like, when you they're ha- doggies. Dude, when you're with a dog, you can't help it. They want to be photographed. Yeah. They're so cute. They're the best. Yeah. Little bundles of joy, dude. What's your baby? want to bite your face, cutie. Uh, my baby of the week is Luke Kuechly, linebacker for the Carolina Panthers, <laughs> former defensive player of the year. As many of you know, he retired at the age of 28, most likely due to fear of CTE. He's had some hard concussions that we've witnessed, and it was a hard thing to witness. But I am just so impressed by this guy, not only as a football player, but as a man, dude. You got to read the way his teammates talk about him. Like, he doesn't have social media, which is cool. And all of his teammates still wrote these really glowing uh, just assessments of who he is on uh, on social media. Like Greg Olson said, words can't describe who Luke Kukli is as a person, friend, and teammate. We have shared countless memories together both on the field and away from it. I feel honored to be his friend and always appreciate the impact he had on my life. Love you, buddy. I mean, they're teammates, so you're like, all right, I get it. But then, I mean, the depth of it. Trey Boston said, one of the best teammates I've ever had, the first person you meet when you come into the locker room, always told people I teach my son to be like you. You're the model of the standard, future Hall of Famer, proud to call you one of the bros, one heck of a career. Love you, Luke. And it just goes on, dude. Like, Jonathan Stewart, Luke Kukli is one of the most pure and authentic people I've met. He was a great teammate and friend, <laughs> honored to have played with you. The gridiron will miss your present, but I'm excited to see what the next chapter has for you. Love you, bro. And it just comes from every direction, from teammate and opponent. They all just say he was one of the best guys, like, to ever do it. Like, they're all like, yeah, he was a dominant football player, but doesn't even compare to the one that he, to the person he was. And I, I just, 
I love that, dude. Ethical gladiator. What's cooler than that? That's ass. That's epic. Jack, dude, with a gentle soul. Come on. I like it. Fire me up, Luke. Fire me up. Chad, who is your legend of the week? My legend of the week is my buddy Kevin L. Beast, college buddy, aka Mr. Plow, aka. That's it. Clear the road. Clear the road because he's coming. And if you have snow, it's getting tossed to the side on the sidewalk. That's uh, where it goes. Yeah. So, uh, Kevin, what up, dude? He's just a legend. He's just been a good friend ever since college. Just always looking out, always bringing the laps, uh, laughs, always bringing the stoke, always bringing the good vibes, always bringing the party. You know, like if you hit up Kevin L. And you're coming to visit town, or he's coming to visit town. He's bringing the rager. He's bringing the good vibes, and he's bringing the beer bong, and he's going to make sure that you funnel at least three brews. Dude. And then you create some good memories, because Kevin's all about He's just like, he's one of your, he's one of those dogs where you're just like, dude, you're a good dude, and I like it. So shout out to Kevin. Keep being a beast. Mr. Plow. You roughed this yesterday, too. Beer bong enthusiast, quiet environmental conservationists because they're not burning red cups absolutely you know they're green that's what's up dude who's your legend my legend of the week is greg whitley and gabby butler greg whitley the creator the creator of last chance you one of the best docuseries of all time especially the first two season when we're at uh east mississippi state i think so uh but dude he's got another banger cheer about the best cheerleading team in the country <clears throat> at Navarro College. Great characters, explosive athletes, and just the same kind of rhythm of Last Chance You, but in a you know the, the other side of the sports spectrum, and it's just as compelling, and none more compelling to me than Gabby Butler. She's been famous since she was a little kid on social media doing stretches and just a freak athlete. She's like the most famous cheerleader in America. She drills it every time, but dude, she's so transparent on the show about how much pressure she feels and how it gets to her. And you're like, all right, well, you're an ace in the hole, total stud when you're on the mat, but then you also have a three-dimensional personality that makes you compelling. That's what's up. You are inspiring. Gabby, keep hucking aerials. Or keep, they call it throw it. Your throws are off today. Dude, the coach, super hot, super smart, dominant competitor. Mm. She's freaking doing the battle ropes. And then she's got I the love battle ropes. she's got the kids on the mat. They like hurt their back, but they hurt their back <coughs> being foolish. Not really, but just competing more than she would have liked them to. And she's like, "Keep going," mm -hmm. and the kid keeps getting hurt. She's like, "Again, yeah, breaking them, maybe making them stronger." You know, the world breaks us, makes us stronger in the broken places. But sometimes, no. Sometimes you get hurt and it's degenerative. For sure, for sure. Chad, what is your? Do you have a? Emma, do you have a beef, babe, or legend that you'd like to to amplify on? Um, my only beef is uh, L.A. real estate. Oh, oh so dude, I'm looking yeah. for an apartment right now, and it's just fucking brutal out there. What's going I down? Hear you. It it's, goes fast. I heard once a place is on the on the market, it's gone in like eight hours. Yeah. You got to be first to it. Yeah, things move really fast, and it's like you have to give thirty days before you can leave your current spot. But when you find one, they want you in there in like two days. And like security deposits and like everything the pictures are all lies it like looks beautiful and then you show up and it's actually a dump so it's, it's a whole game pictures are all lies now i mean there, there's too much we can do with like composition it's like I, photoshop shop has gotten too good it's too yeah. good it's too good so you can't believe a single photo you see online it's all fake it's I all know. fake i had those experiences when i was moving to i was like what is going you on you like think you find the perfect apartment you get all excited about it and then you show up and it's like actually a basement with no windows yeah the like, size what? of it too you're like oh this place is huge and then yeah. you get in there you're like it's a shoebox yeah you're like yeah. this is a glorified closet what are you talking about who's so. your photographer i want them to take pictures of my dong yeah exactly <laughs> whoa yeah Dude, Emma, I, I mean, I, I, I gotta say, Culver City. I'm. Just, yeah, that's on the. That's definitely it, on the list. Throw it, there's some good stuff out there. Throw it on the dar. Hell I, yeah, I love it. Good vibes, spacious. Good people, good people in Culver City too, right? Good people, quality people. Good food. Yeah. Great food. Good steam room. Oh, uh, good steam room. Uh, and then you got you know you got Manhattan Beach right there, Venice. You got and then you got West Hollywood. I mean, it's perfect location. That's what's up. Chad, what is your quote of the week? 
Well, this is off your recommendation, so I'm going to do a scene from Fast and the Furious. Yeah, because you've been crushing this. Oh, dude, thank you. And I need you to prompt me. Okay. So I need you to go, Brian, don't lose that cool of yours. That's your meal ticket. Brian, don't lose that cool of yours. That's your meal ticket. Oh, wait, can you take it again? Yeah, for sure. Let me get in the zone. Yeah, my dog. The Paul zone. Brian, don't lose that cool of yours. That's your meal ticket. Well, my my meal ticket? Well, I can't pay for my own shrimp. I got the shrimp. Is it... (laughs) No, see, that, that's one thing you understand about me, Dom. I don't need handouts. I don't take handouts. I earn my way every step. Just got to make a little something extra on the side, like you. Like me? That's what I mean. What do you mean? That's what I mean. Look, I'm not stupid, all right? I know there's no way in hell you're paying for all that shit that's under the hood of those cars by doing tune-ups and selling groceries. Now, whatever it is you're, yeah, now whatever it is you're in on, I went in on it, too. All right, well, we've got to get you in a car and get you to race for so I can start making some money off of you. Eat your shrimp. Is that what he says? It's kind of close, right? He, he takes a thing out, a piece of paper, he slides it. He's like, what's this? It's directions to race wars. And then he takes a big bite of the shrimp. <laughs> he was great. All right, dude, mine is a... Uh, it's, uh, it's more of a story. It's from... Uh, <coughs> It's from uh, Gandhi. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. It's from... A mom comes to Gandhi with her son, and she goes, Sir, my son eats too much sugar. It is not good for his health. Would you please advise him to stop eating it? Gandhi listens carefully, turns to her, and speaks to the son. Go home and come back in two weeks. The woman looks perplexed. Two weeks later, she returned, boy in hand. Gandhi motioned for them to come forward. He looked directly at the boy and said, Boy, you should stop eating sugar. It is not good for your health. The boy nodded and promised he would not continue the habit. The boy's mother turned to Gandhi and asked, Why didn't you tell him that two weeks ago when I brought him here to see you? Gandhi smiled. Mother, two weeks ago, I was still eating sugar myself. Nice. Gandhi. Yeah. Beast. Yeah, I heard Cory Booker kept quoting him on Ezra Klein right before he dropped out. Now me and the mad scientist got to rip apart the block and replace the piston rings you fried. It's so good. Ask any racer. Ask any real racer. It don't matter if you win by, win by an inch or a mile. Winning's winning. Dude, I love the I love the extras in the back. It's so nineties, dude, with like uh, oh. these huge shades, and you're like, oh no, yeah. Oh. Hey, how you stand by your car? It's how you drive it. Oh. But Paul handles it all so chill. You gotta come out with a smile. Yeah, dude, it's water off a duck's back, dude. Yeah, he's laughing at it. That disarmed, he's laughing. He disarmed Toretto like that. Beautiful. What are you smiling about? <laughs> dude, I almost had you. Almost had me? You never had me. You never had your car. The best. <laughs> uh, Chad, what's your phrase of the week for getting after it? Uh, let's rip apart the engine block. Nice, dude. What's yours? Gandhi. <laughs> Honor your incarnation. Nice. Yeah. Emma, anything you want to throw down in the quotes department? No, I don't got any quotes off the top of my head at the moment. That's what's up. I dig it. Well, dudes, as always, we are brought to you by Danny Babona and UCI Baseball, one of the best baseball programs in the country, stewarded by one of the best coaches in the country. If you're a young buckaroo <laughs> and you can swing or hit, that's where you should go. They should call it UC Newport Beach because it's right there. That's right. I know Daniel Babona. He's a good guy. He's a solid guy. He swings a good bat. Throws a good line drive. Is that a term, a baseball term? Close enough, my friend. <laughs> and we're also brought to you by Douglas Lubricant. Guys, the best in the biz. Uh, guys, you want to bone. And you want to bone well. And when you bone, you want to bone smooth. Okay? So next time you bone, bone right with Douglas. Tons of flavors, orange, vanilla, lemon, citrus, tart. They taste great. Grape, original, anal. Guys, and go out there this week and get after it. Get those buku dollars, all right? What's up? What's been slowing you down? Illusions in your head. Throw them to the side and attack reality. That's where you belong, in the ring, in the fight, in the arena taking on your challenges. 
sword in hand, lion in your other hand. You got it by the throat. You respect it, but you're going to respectfully put it down. Slay your lion. All right, later, guys. Later. Was that a quote? No. <laughs> if you need advice, 